Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and after seeing Alien Covenant, for me, one of the big lingering mysteries surrounds the xenomorph creature itself. Just like in Prometheus, Covenant introduces a new variation on the alien, but there are also xenomorphs and eggs and facehuggers in this movie, so where, where did these guys come from? So in this video, I'm gonna explain every form of the xenomorph that we see in Alien Covenant, why they're different from aliens in other movies, how they evolve, who or what created them, and why some parts of them look different when they see each other in the showers. And spoiler warning, if you haven't seen Alien Covenant yet, I'm gonna ruin it for you. I might actually make it a little bit better for you since it might make more sense now, but either way, you should just go watch the movie first. Okay, so the main thing to understand is that as of Alien Covenant, we have now seen three main types of aliens. They may look and function similarly, but they're different. Not all aliens are the same. First, there's the classic Xenomorph from the original line of Alien movies. Second, the Deacon, who showed up at the end of Prometheus. And third, the new Neomorph from Alien Covenant. So let's start with the Xenomorph, the one we know the most about. So the Xenomorph's evolutionary cycle, of course, begins with the Ovomorph, the egg. These are produced by the Xenomorph Queen. The eggs contain the facehugger, which latches onto a host. And then after it impregnates this host, the facehugger exoskeleton detaches, and the alien later takes the form of the chestburster and leaves the host quite gracefully. And then it outgrows that husk and grows very quickly into the large, deadly Xenomorph that cocoon new hosts for future gestation by new facehuggers. We also know that the xenomorph takes on the DNA of the host that it gestates inside. Remember in Alien 3, a facehugger attached to a dog producing a four-legged xenomorph nicknamed the Runner. Now, I know it seems like eggs, facehuggers, and xenomorph-looking aliens do show up in Alien Covenant, implying that there must have been a xenomorph queen somewhere to lay those eggs, and there's more to that that I'll talk about in a bit, but first we need to talk about these other two forms because they help explain how we get to this point. In Alien Covenant. The second form is the Deacon from Prometheus. So quick review of the creatures that we saw in Prometheus. It started with the Black Liquid, a bioweapon created by the engineers to induce genetic chaos in a species. They actually intended to use it on this species, the human race, because they were unhappy with the monsters that their creations ended up becoming. And like the Xenomorph, this Black Liquid has a unique reaction to each living thing it encounters. So for example, when it made contact with indigenous worms on LB223, it resulted in this hammerpede, a cobra-like creature with acidic blood. So the black liquid can be inhaled or ingested as it was by Holloway when David put a drop of it in his cocktail. Then when Holloway had intercourse with Shaw, the result was the trilobite squid creature, which Shaw removed via cesarean section, also quite gracefully. And that baby trilobite matured immediately into a room-sized squid with tentacles used to orally impregnate hosts, namely this engineer, which resulted in the deacon. And at the time, a lot of people thought that this was a xenomorph, but it wasn't. The back of the head is more pointed, which the deacon uses to burst out of the engineer's chest. Also, its mouth is pretty different. There's no inner mouth-like tongue that snaps out, and its teeth are more human-like. Now, this was the last time that we saw the deacon, but this black liquid is what eventually results in the third type of alien, the neomorph in Alien Covenant. So, we learned in this movie that David, after leaving LV-223, arrived on the engineer planet and released this dirty bomb of black liquid on the engineers below. He later confesses that it wasn't an accident, as he initially said. He did it on purpose because he's obsessed with overthrowing his creators to experiment and create the perfect organism. So this caused the genetic chaos and violent mutations that we saw only bits of in Prometheus, this time on a wide scale, eventually wiping out all the non-botanical life on this planet. That's why when the Covenant crew explores this planet, they don't hear or see any animals. The black goo also resulted in these mutants egg sac-like plants, which release microscopic airborne spores that instinctively group together and target a host, implanting through the ears, nose, or mouth as they do with lead word and halot. Then there's a similar gestation process and blah, another graceful exit. Except this wasn't the xenomorph chest burster, this is a blood burster, and it grows into the adult white-colored neomorph that we see in this movie. So just to clarify, yes, the neomorph was kind of indirectly created by David. They were one of his many biological experiments in his pursuit of the perfect organism. But what about these eggs that he has? Like, how do they get here underneath the engineer city? Are they xenomorph eggs? Does this mean David created the xenomorph too? Okay, so lots of big questions here. Let's unpack all this. So it's still pretty unclear whether David created the classic xenomorph as we know and love it. But it does seem like that he created the protomorph. That is the early stage xenomorph that popped out of Captain Orem and Lope 
in Covenant. This protomorph alien is also probably what popped out of Shaw. David revealed that he used her body in his experiments to produce this new alien. So again, these protomorphs aren't full xenomorphs yet. Notice how their eggs look a little different. And even though the protomorphs follow a pretty similar facehugger stage, the appearance of the chestburster is pretty different. So rather than the fleshy snake form of the classic movies, which I, um, spent money on a stupid toy of, the chestbursting protomorph looks like a smaller baby Groot version of the fully grown adult form. Of course, these could have just been design changes by Ridley Scott, but I think that he wanted to show that these aliens weren't exactly the classic xenomorphs, at least not yet in their evolution. So why add this in-between stage? My theory is that David is still perfecting this creature. So for example, when he released the facehugger on Orem, maybe he realized that the gestation period wasn't long enough. Like, it seemed like it was only a few hours tops. Meanwhile, in Alien, the gestation period with Cain seems much longer. He wakes up and returns to seemingly normal health, tricking him into this false sense of security so that he can hang out with other potential hosts over dinner. So it's possible that that longer gestation period is a genetic feature that David adds later on, with a new chestburster that gestates more slowly and discreetly. That could increase increase the likelihood of the host carrying it somewhere new where it can spread and multiply. And yeah, that's a pretty f***ed up way of thinking, but it would make perfect sense to a heartless android like David. Now, the other big question is, where did these eggs come from? So there are a few possibilities. One is that these eggs were the result of David's experimentation. Like, David created the eggs, and thus David created what will eventually be the xenomorph. Now, the question with that is, how could he do that if the black liquid wiped out all the animal life? on the planet? Like what animal DNA could he use to play God with? Maybe Prometheus already gave us that answer. More gods. Remember, we already saw one engineer in hypersleep on board the Juggernaut. It's possible that there were other sleeping engineers somewhere on the ship, which David could have experimented on during his 10 years on the planet to produce these eggs. There's also a kind of out there theory from the alien universe that involves a process called egg morphing. Egg morphing was a deleted concept from the original alien film in 19 79, where a xenomorph can transform organic material, like a human body, into a new egg. So like, rather than cocooning a human prisoner into an incubation pod for a facehugger, they like, keep cocooning it and turn it into an egg that a facehugger would come out of. And I guess maybe David created these eggs through the egg morphing process. But really, I think there's a simpler explanation. Remember, in the scene, David told Orem that the eggs were waiting for mother. And while that could mean that they're waiting for like a host body to incubate them, David could be hinting at a different kind of mother. And really, the rule of the alien movies is where there's eggs, there's breakfast. Also an alien queen. Ridley Scott considers James Cameron's aliens to be canon. And in that movie, of course, we see the alien queen laying these xenomorph eggs. That's where they come from. So if Ridley Scott plans on keeping the queen as the origin of these eggs, where did that queen come from and where is she in Alien Covenant? One theory that I find interesting is that the queen queen was the protomorph that popped out of Shaw. And like that queen could have laid the eggs underneath the engineer city, unleashing the facehuggers on the Covenant crew. Remember, if you looked closely at that scene of Shaw singing Take Me Home in the hologram, you can kind of make out the shape of a xenomorph or facehugger tail in the hologram behind her. And maybe that belongs to a queen. As for where the queen is now, she's right behind you. Or she's somewhere beneath the surface of the planet. Or maybe she died off with the rest of the animal life. Or maybe she'll show up in a sequel. Like, I feel like revealing that alien queen backstory could be part of Ridley Scott's plan for Alien Awakening. But for now, it seems like the main plan is to follow David's journey to create the perfect organism. Now, I don't think Alien Covenant clearly confirmed that he did that yet. Again, these protomorphs aren't exactly xenomorphs, but this chilling final scene shows David yakking up two alien embryos and storing them in deep freeze on the Covenant. So clearly he's going to be involved in the species' ongoing evolution probably using the human embryos and sleeping Covenant passengers as more hosts to experiment on. Which will inevitably lead to David genetically engineering a facehugger to somehow impregnate his own android body to spawn the alien queen. I figured it out, guys. This is the most viable theory in this whole video. You're welcome. Okay, that covers the evolution of the Xenomorph as updated in Alien Covenant. And hopefully future Alien movies will fill in these missing links on the 
alien evolution chain. So if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to New Rock Stars. You can also contribute to us on Patreon. Thanks so much to all of our current patrons, especially Kenny Smith. You can hit me up on Twitter at EA Voss with any thoughts or questions maybe that you have about Alien Covenant or follow New Rock Stars on Twitter at New Rock Stars for updates on our videos. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.